dystopian times. Now, I'm very, very thankful that we have a communist on the panel in Sam to react to her definition of not just communism, but what she calls corporate communism. Large corporations are military industrial complex. military industrial complex is a major issue. So I have a term for that. I call it corporate communism. Corporate communism destroys small businesses in America. And I have a very good example from my district. They destroy the small businesses and the corporations gain all the control and they can't be defeated. And they mm. do the bidding of the government like they're doing. Biden's saying, oh, we're, the government's not going to mandate vaccines, but the big corporations are doing it. Corporate communism, they're putting the policy in place through their businesses on their employees and on their customers, like we've seen with the well, airlines. And that's capitalism. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's 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 the point. That's capitalism. I mean, maybe it's a sign that like that we're winning some sort of ideological war that they take all the all the terrible things about capitalism and just try to call it communism. They at least recognize that it's a unsustainable system here. Um, I used to get frustrated when Bernie did similar stuff when he's talked about yeah. corporate socialism and versus. You know, and, and I guess That's I know fair. that there is kind of a kind of a history like Martin Luther King used similar terminology, but it just it it mystifies when we don't need to. Like, yeah, we can we can point out all these things that capitalism is doing and define it as capitalism because they're deeply unpopular and nobody likes them. And by 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 trying to redefine socialism in a way you just end up helping the right and end up helping Marjorie Taylor green talking points down the road. I, I don't know how to respond <laughs> to something like that other than the way you guys do. And she's describing capitalism like that is. Well, yeah. At, the, at which... this point we've, we've long since reached the singularity where none of these words mean anything in the common discourse, especially <laughs> for the right. Right. I mean, yeah. the use of the words fascism, communism, and socialism have long since superseded any meaning and have been reduced completely and entirely to thing. I don't like, um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if you can ever be pulled back from that point, you know? Um, it's cause like, if a person's 32 years old and they vote red and they think that communism, socialism, and fascism are all when corporations allow vaccine requirements in their stores. Like, how do you, what could you ever do to reestablish the meaning of those terms in that person's head? I feel it's almost like you have to abandon them and we need to come up yeah. with a new term to describe all this. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I think that like a lot of the time, um, this is one of the things that I like. I think that there's a lot of, I don't want to say time wasted on trying to win over right wing people, but like, uh, I think that like most of the time, uh, aiming for everyone who's not already an adherent of, of Marjorie Taylor green and Matt Gates, um, is, is <laughs> usually a good thing because it is. And I, I want people to be, to understand this. It is, almost impossible to fish someone back from a position where they think that like where where you're of your talk where you're talking about where the words are so diluted that they don't even have the same they're not even speaking the same language as you they say communism and that equals in their brain what joe biden does when he orders you know an <laughs> extra egg on the taxpayer's dime like that's what they literally mean and they take that 100 yeah. percent them that that's not the dictionary dictionary definition of communism yeah. or of socialism or of anything or of welfare like i mean when they think of welfare like they, like when i think of welfare i think of an arduous obnoxious process to get pocket change from the government so that you can have food in the middle of a pandemic where you have to fill out 50 pa pages of paperwork in order to even do that um but yeah and uh, and don't forget by the way this is the person who had to learn that the holocaust was bad by going oh, to the right. holocaust museum yeah. <laughs> so maybe i don't know if she went to like marx's grave she could learn some things about theory maybe. in the interim uh if she wants to keep labeling everything as way more badass than it is like i i don't understand because uh, every day i'm hearing how joe biden is this radical communist uh you know neo-marxist superstar the child of angles and all this kind of stuff like <laughs> Where, where does that leave us? Where does that leave the left if all these words have no meaning anymore? I will say it does give us a small it does give us one small advantage, which is that uh, in when people get to that level of having their own entire lexicon, um, that's totally different from everybody else. It's incredibly alienating. 
Um, and mm -hmm. so like, obviously the people who are in are very hard to get out. This is like cults, right? Like it's like, once they're in, it's really, really hard to get out. It's d damn near impossible. And they rely on that. They fish people in, you get stuck forever and they slowly and surely accumulate. But, uh, it, this applies on a bigger level. Like if you can, if, if we, as like the online left or as all like the general left in America can, can. Uh, instill a sense of just like incredulity towards this sort of nonsense which i do think that there's been success at by the way i think that like especially in streaming spaces like people laugh about the like joe biden being a, a chinese communist or being a socialist now that's good that people laugh mm -hmm. at that and think that's a funny thing i think that's how you inoculate people from ever getting pulled in in the first place and i think it's a much harder project to try and i, I and personally i don't even know that if this is something that like online content creators can even meaningfully participate in outside of just sort of chance um because like like whether you can get people out of that far right of a thing over the internet alone um i don't know that that's possible but um we can certainly inoculate a lot of people to this idea that like that rant should be taken seriously at all and if people watch that and they think oh my god why is the why is this why is the scary looking lady and the scary looking man um, telling me that Walmart is a is a corporate communist, um, like <laughs> then and then they just laugh and turn their brains off because it just seems like a, absurd boomer bait. And if we uh, yeah. can give that impression, I think that's going to be really effective at making their message fall on deaf ears. I was just yeah. wondering where the whistle guy was. We needed the whistle guy. Oh who was yeah, interrupting the last event that those two were at. <laughs> that was so good. I love committing laughed. auditory Hysteric. assault on people. Oh, that was so good. Uh, okay, so we talked about doomerism for a good portion of this podcast, but I'm actually going to end on a positive note, folks. So we just watched Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I just want you to know if you're watching this and you think that you're not worthy enough or you're going to take a test and you just don't think you can do it or you're applying for a job and you don't think that you're qualified, if Marjorie Taylor Greene can get elected to Congress, you can do anything, anything. So just keep that in mind. Bro. So. Louis, having said, Louis, he might be a better example, to be fair.